Hello, welcome to the course on chemical process instrumentation. My name is Devashi Shorkar. Uh, I am an associate professor in chemical engineering department of IIT Kharagpur. Uh, in the title, uh, chemical process instrumentation, the term instrument, instrumentation refers to measuring instruments. So, essentially, we will be talking about measuring instruments and we will be talking about that instruments, those instruments which are used to measure important process variables in chemical process industries. Uh, as students of chemical engineering discipline or allied discipline, you know the importance of process variables such as temperature, pressure, flow rate, level, etc. Let us say temperature, you know the temperature heavily influences the conversion that you get from a reactor. In case of uh, say fixed bed reactor, there is no fixed temperature in the bed, there will be a temperature profile, but it is important to know that the temperature cannot exceed the hotspot temperature uh, that is the hotspot temperature defined for that catalytic fixed bed. So, it is important to be able to measure temperatures. Similarly, pressure is another important process variable. There are several types of pressures. There are high pressures, there are low pressures, there are intermediate level pressures. High pressures like we have storage tanks at very high pressures. So, you should be able to measure those high pressures. There are vacuum distillation operations which operates at low pressure. So, we should be able to measure low pressures, lower than the atmospheric pressure. Sometimes we are required to measure extremely low pressures or we call them high vacuum measurement. Similarly, there are a lot of applications which are intermediate level pressures. So, since there are different types of pressures or ranges of pressures, there will there cannot be a single instrument or there cannot be a two three instruments which will uh, serve the purpose of all measurements. So, we will have instruments specific for measurement of high pressure, we will have instruments specific for measurements of high vacuum and we will have instruments for measurements of intermediate level pressures. Similar things will also happen to flow measurements, level measurements, etcetera. There are other important chemical process variables such as pH, then uh, we will have uh, say density, so on and so forth. So, this course is spread over 30 hours. So, we will have 60 lectures of 30 minutes and at the end of this course, you will be able to understand the working principles for temperature measuring instrument, pressure measuring instruments, flow measuring instruments, level measuring instruments and on so on and so forth. We would not be able to cover each and every instruments, but we will definitely cover the most commonly used instruments in industries or in laboratories. So, now So, what do you mean by chemical process industry? See, broadly speaking, in a chemical process industry, we convert raw materials into processed marketable products. Remember, these are large scale operations. So, these are commercial scale operations and these operations must be economic, otherwise nobody will invest. Operations will be safe and sustainable. So, these are some typical pictures of various chemical process industries. In general, there will be series of unit operations very complex network of chemical reactions and operations. So, there will be lots and lots of measurements of various chemical process variables. 
this is a typical photograph of a control room. So, this is here say for this industry if this is the control room for this industry all the process variables not all mostly all will come to this control room. Because each and every operation in these industries has to be monitored. So, that operation is as desired and safe. This cannot be done by human being. So, we need instruments to do that for us. So, there will be various instruments hundreds and hundreds of instruments measuring different process variables of interest and we will send the information about what they have measured to the control room. The control room will analyze those signals and take appropriate action if necessary. So, what is the purpose of measurement? In other words, why should we measure? Measurement is an essential activity in every branch of science and technology. In a chemical process industry, if you work, you will see that you are always asking yourself or somebody else is asking you what is the temperature in the reactor at this time or what is the temperature at the furnace or what is the temperature at the reboiler. What is the pressure in a high pressure reactor vessel? It is important to know because the, temp the pressure in the high pressure reactor vessel must not exceed the specified limit. Otherwise, it we can face an hazardous situation. What is the flow rate of a process fluid in a pipe? What is the flow rate of reflux time in the distillation column? You know distillation column is an extremely important separation process in chemical process industry and using reflux stream we can have a control on the purity of the product that comes from the top of the distillation column. So, it is extremely important to manipulate the flow rate of the reflux stream. So, to be able to manipulate a flow rate, we must be able to measure the flow rate of the reflux stream in a distillation color. So, we need a good flow level flow measuring instrument. Similarly, what is the level of liquid in a storage tank or reboiler? It is important to know the level of liquid in storage tank, otherwise it can overflow or it can even run dry if there is drainage from the tank. Similarly, for reboiler, there has to be a definite level maintained in the reboiler of a distillation column. So, you should know the level of the liquid in the reboiler. What is the concentration in the product steam coming out of the reactor? It is important to know the concentration of the product that is coming out of the reactor because that is the basic purpose with which you are carrying out the reaction. You are carrying out a reaction in a reactor to meet certain conversion. So, by analyzing the concentration of the product steam, you know that whether you are meeting your target or not. So, you should be able to measure concentration. Remember concentration measurement is not very easy, particularly when it comes to online measurement of the concentration. Later on, we will be talking about some concentration measurement in this class. So, what is the pH, moisture content, conductivity, density of a sample? So, this are, if you summarize, you see that the most commonly encountered 
process variables in a chemical process industries are temperature, pressure, flow rate, liquid level, concentration, conductivity, moisture content, pH, density, so on and so forth. So, in this class, we will be talking about some of the important instrumentation that are used to measure these process variables. Since one major objective of measurement is to have a control over the process, we will also be talking about those instruments whose output can be useful for the purpose of measurement. We will be talking more about this soon. So, to summarize the fundamental purpose of measurement in industrial manufacturing and processing is to obtain a numerical value generally speaking corresponding to the variable being measured so that we can determine and improve the quality of a product or the efficiency of the production. So, the fundamental purpose of a measurement in industrial manufacturing or processing is to obtain a numerical value to the variable that is being measured. See numerical value is always important. Let us look at here, we have three different temperature measuring instrument. This one you are familiar with is a digital clinical thermometer. This can be used to measure body temperature. This is also a clinical thermometer which can be used to body temperature. Similar glass ordinary mercury in glass thermometer you must have also seen in your laboratories. This is another temperature measuring instrument which is known as thermocouple. Now, let us look at here. Say if I have fever, I can say my temp fever is high or my fever is not so high. But instead of saying that, if I say that I have temperature 38 degrees Celsius or if I have 39 degrees Celsius, it will give me a better indication of the degree of fever I have. So, it is important to assign a numerical value to the variable that as I am measuring. These three figures also show that there are all are temperature measuring instruments, but definitely this one or this one you will not use to measure say the temperature of a reactor, say industrial reactor. But thermocouple which we will talk about in more detail later will be used for measurement of temperature in industrial operations. So, this gives you an this is a being a digital thermometer gives you an indication in terms of digit directly say body temperature 37 degrees Celsius or 38 degrees Celsius. Look at here there is a graduated scale attached here and the mercury level you can read the mercury level from this graduated scale and that is an indication of the temperature. Similarly, thermocouple works on a principle which is as follows. You take two dissimilar metals and forms two junctions. This is one junction 
and there is one junction here. Now, if these two junctions are kept at two different temperatures and EMF is produced within the circuit and this EMF is a measure of the temperature, that EMF can be measured using a millivolt meter because that EMF is in the range of millivolt. So, from this millivolt I can correlate the temperature of the medium which is being measured by this. So, here also this millivolt meter will give you a number, a numerical value to the temperature. So, it is important to obtain a numerical value corresponding to the variable being measured, so that we can determine the quality of the product or the process and also can improve the quality of the product or efficiency of the process. Let us look at a simple example, a control of water level in a tank. Think of a very simple task. You have this tank to which let us say water is flowing in through this and water flows out through this pipe and you have a bulb here. Now, you stand here, look at the level of the water in the tank and let us say we have decided that you maintain a certain level of water in the tank. Now, you look at the level in the tank, if the level is more than the desired level, then we have to open the valve more, so that more of liquid, more of water goes out and the level comes down. Similarly, if the level is less than the desired level, then less amount of water should go out from this pipe. So, you have to close the valve. So, by continually, by continuously manipulating this valve, it will be possible to maintain the level of this water in this tank to the desired level. So, this is schematically presented here. Now, this is how it can be done automatically instead of manually someone was doing someone is continuously manipulating the valve. A level control can be introduced and the task of controlling the water at a desired level in the tank can be achieved. So, the water so the water comes in flows in through this pipe. Look at here there is something called L T this is level transmitter. So, it is essentially is a level measuring instrument. So, please note that to have a control of the water level in the tank, the first thing that we need to know is what is the level of the water in the tank currently, because if the water in the tank is at the desired level, you do not have to do anything. But if the water in the tank is not at the desired level, whether it is more than the desired level or the lower than the desired level, we have to take some corrective action. So, the first thing 
that you need to know you need to do to take a control action is to know what is the value of the water level in the tank right now. So, this will be done by a level measuring instrument. So, an instrument takes one of the most important place in the entire control room because this first receives information about the status of the process whether you need to take any control action or not. So, the level transmitter is a level measuring instrument receives the information about the level in the tank and then this sends the, sig sends the signal to a level controller. The level controller has been fed with the desired set point that is the desired level. So, it compares the level controller compares the desired level, the desired level and the measured level and accordingly it either increases the flow rate or decreases the flow rate to maintain the level of the water in the tank at the desired level. So, what we note here is this that a measuring instrument takes a very very important place in the control loop. Let us take a look at distillation column. So, distillation column as we just mentioned that one of the most important separation process in chemical process industry is a very old and well established process. There are there has been uh, there are many new separation technologies in place, but even now distillation column are widely used for separating a liquid mixture. It can separate a binary mixture, it can separate a multi component mixture as well. In the most simplest distillation column you have a feed stream it's containing liquid mixtures which enters the distillation column somewhere in the middle of the distillation column and you have a reboiler at the bottom of the distillation column and a condenser at the top of the distillation column. So, the feed enters the distillation column, it is vaporized, the heat is supplied by the reboiler here. So, the more volatile component of the mixture goes up and the vapor that comes out from the top of the distillation column are richer in more volatile component. So, using a condenser the vapor is condensed, it is collected in a reflux drum, some part of the reflux from the reflux drum is fed back to the distillation column as a reflux stream and some part is taken out as product. Similarly, from the bottom of the distillation column the less volatile component comes out. Now, look at this distillation column closely one more time. All the symbols that you see T i, P i, F i, L i they are all measuring instruments. For example, F i stands for a flow indicating instruments, P i stands for 
a pressure indicating instrument, a TI stands for temperature indicating instrument, LI stands for level indicating instrument and so on and so forth. So, even in the simplest case, imagine the number of instruments that will be there in a typical distillation column. The actual number will be much more for an industrial scale operation. The reason I want to show you this is if you look at it carefully, you will see that temperature, pressure, flow, level all in all such instruments are required here and temperature, pressure, flow level are the most commonly encountered process variables in chemical process industries. So, at the end of this course, you will know more about these instruments. So, let us now talk about the course or lecture plan. In the week 1, we will talk about general principle and representation of instruments. In week 2 and week 3, we will talk about performance characteristics of instruments and data analysis. So, we will try to understand how to analyze the performance of one instrument over another and we will also try to learn some basic data analysis procedures in week 2 and week 3. In week 4, we will talk about the transducer elements. The transducer elements are those elements which will receive the signal in one physical form and send output as in another physical form. So, we will talk about several important transducer elements in week 4. In week 5, we will talk about pressure measurement. Since we have moderate pressures, we have high pressures, we have very low pressures, we will talking, we'll be talking about pressure measurement in week 5 and week 6. In week 5, we will talk about moderate and high pressure measuring instruments and week 6, we will be talking about high vacuum measuring instruments. Similarly, we will be talking about temperature measuring instruments in week 7 and week 8. Week 9, we will be talking about various flow measuring instruments that are available and we should be familiar with. Week 10, we will be talking about various level measuring instruments. In week 11, we will talk about concentration measurement, density measurement, viscosity measurement and pH measurement. And finally, in week 12, we will talk about control valves and piping and instrumentation diagram. So, piping and instrumentation diagram is something like a process diagram with all the instruments that are used are indicated in that diagram. So, at this end of this course, you should be able to analyze a piping and instrumentation diagram as well. So, this is uh, the summary of the course plan that we just discussed. These are the textbooks. Doablin is a very good book, measurement systems, applications and design. You can also look at Johnson process control instrumentation technology. Paternovis is another good book, principles of industrial instrumentation. Ekman is another good book, industrial instrumentation. So, any of these books will do. So, now the quickly plan for this week 1. 
the lecture one the current lecture we essentially talked about some introduction motivation course plan textbooks etc in lecture 2 in lecture 2 we'll talk we'll be talking about types of measurement applications direct measurement versus indirect measurement and various functions of instruments lecture 3 we'll be talking about an important concept known as functional elements and we'll also be talking about how to classify various instruments lecture 4 we will be talking about various inputs to the instruments and their examples such as desired inputs interfering inputs modifying inputs etc and we will also be talking about input output configurations of instruments what are the influence of interfering input when the instrument is actually want to measure the desired input such issues we will be talking about in lecture 4 and finally in lecture 5 we'll be talking about standards and calibrations briefly we'll touch up on microprocessor based instrumentation and there will be questions and assignments for this week so i'll stop this lecture here and we'll continue with the next lecture thank you